report circulating right now that Tom Brady is set to rejoin the team shortly. Didn't know if you could provide uh, any more insight into that or clarity. Well, like I said, a week and a half ago, I said he'll be back this week. So, my, you know, that hadn't changed. We expect him back this week. Gotcha. Do you know, do you know yet which day it's going to be? It'll be this week early. Good night. Todd, do you have right. an update on Aaron Stinney? Yeah, he has an ACL, MCL. At this point, Todd, with your, your depth issues and the injuries on the line, do you feel comfortable with the depth you have now, or do you guys feel like you have to go outside and maybe bring in somebody else? Uh, we have some depth right now, but we're always looking to bring in somebody that can help the team. So if there's something out there that's available to us that we can get, we'll, we'll try to take a shot at it. Greg Allman. Hey, Todd, with, with Stinney out of the picture, your options there at left guard are are either rookies or guys who have played very sparingly. Are, are you comfortable moving forward without kind of a veteran in that group? I mean, how, how much of a an urgency is there to add some experience to your options there? Well, it's not about experience. It's, a, it's about experience playing. Uh, Luke right. and Liberette do a great job right now. They've gotten a lot of reps, so they've earned that right to compete for that spot. And if maybe one more goes down, you know, we, we don't mind playing rookies. We've been playing rookies since we've been here. It's just a matter of them getting in-game experience. So we're comfortable with the guys we have right now. But if we can find an option that's out there that fits us, we'll look at it. Todd, we, we saw Tristan Wirfs leave uh, with an oblique on Thursday. Do, do you know how, how much in question his status would be for the opener and, and how much of a concern that is? Well, right now it's day to day. It, it shouldn't be much of a concern, but we'll monitor it going forward. We'll go to Evan Winter. Hey, Coach. Uh, penalties have been pretty low overall, but there's been quite a few offensive holding penalties is this due to the defensive assignments, uh, the guys playing with poor technique, or is it just the relative inexperience with uh, players like Robert Hainsey, so on and so forth? Well, he's getting his, his experience as he goes. Uh, like you said, the penalties have been down. We can't afford holding penalties. Sometimes the back redirects and we're holding on a little too long. We got to clean that up and get our hands inside. We don't want those things holding us back. And then on uh, the Don Gardner interception, um, looked like he had pretty good route recognition on that go route. Obviously, he did the mental or the physical part of the the play, but I was just getting your thoughts on what you saw mentally from him. You know, it's two games in a row. He's got his hands on the ball and stepped up and made a play. Uh, the moment's not too big for him. He understands what he's doing, and given the opportunities, he's made the best of them. Luke Easterling. Coach, when it comes down to those final cuts, you know, what are those conversations like and who is involved in those? I know it's you and, and Jason, obviously, but how do the assistant position coaches fill into that when you guys are talking about which positions you're going to carry that extra guy? How is it, you know, comparing special teams value to what they could bring as far as depth at their position on their side of the ball? Well, they have a great deal to do with it. I mean, me and Jason, as well as Spy Tech and Bill, we sit in these meetings and listen to the assistant coaches. Then we talk about fit, how they fit, <clears throat> where they fit, how versatile they are, how much they play teams, how we're going to use them. And, you know, with the starters and key backups, you want the best 53. And then for the rest of the makeup of the team, you want the right 53. So, <clears throat> so there's a lot that goes into that. And there's ongoing conversations all the time. And some people had a chance to step up this week. Some people may not have. And we'll have those discussions this afternoon particularly at wide receiver. I know there's been some talk in the past with, you know, Tom being involved in kind of which guys he likes and has rapport with. You've had some rookie undrafted free agents play really well throughout camp in these preseason games. How hard is it going to be to kind of compare experience and, and rapport with Brady with some of those new guys that have flashed and, and played pretty, really well? Well, that's competitive. I mean, if they're good and make the team, they'll, they'll mesh with Brady. It's, it's not about, who he likes. It's about who's the best player and who's the best fit for the team. If they're the best fit for the team, they'll be the best fit for the quarterback. So we had a lot of competition there. Like I said, every week has been a battle and it's going to come down to the last week. So it's, it's going to be hard either way, but a lot of guys can do a lot of things. Tom Krasnicki. Todd, with three weeks to go before the season opener and all these injuries along your offensive line, how real of a concern is this for you? Well, anytime you lose depth at any position, it's a concern, but we got guys that can play and unfortunate things happen in preseason. Obviously, you can't help the injuries, but we can't afford to get any more hurt down there. I think we still have enough right now, but we're going to be thin in the depth department. Speaking on a positive note, Robert Haynes, he appears to be progressing. He showed you something last night. Is that a position that you're least concerned about in terms of bringing someone in from the outside? 
at the moment I am, but if we have a good depth person out there that can come in and help, we'll definitely look at it. But we're very pleased with where Haynes is at. Steve Isbitz. Coach uh, Leonard Fournette, did you see enough uh, from him last night to sort of end his preseason, or do you expect him to get a little more work going forward? And how do you think he did? We'll look at the tape. I wanted him to play last night because I think running backs should get hit before the first game. and They should get bounced around a little bit because they don't get hit below the waist in practice. So it was important for him to get some bangs and get some knocked around. And this season, this game coming up, we'll see in practice how we want to approach this thing. We haven't had our meetings yet, but right now we'll see. But I thought he got enough in the game. And how did you feel about your pass rush last night? I thought we got back there. I thought uh, Willis was very elusive. I thought we missed him quite a few times, but I thought we made some progress there. Particularly Nelson played very well. I thought Tryon got back there some when he was there, but Nelson probably had the best overall game on defense. And it can get better from a stunt and a game standpoint, but they did get back there. We'll go to Greg Allman. Hey, Todd, you had mentioned how you guys were kind of searching for help at Gunner. I think you used eight different guys on punt coverage at Gunner last night. I know some of that will kind of get solved Um Whoever isn't starting out of Dean and Murphy Bunting can probably be one for you. How concerned are you? I, I know they had, I think, 99 yards in punt returns last night. Uh, by the punt coverage kind of not being in position to handle Kamara having such a strong leg. Well, I, th I think those guys playing on defense and offense a lot are kind of drained, and they're not used to it from a preseason standpoint. I think once the season starts and they get into their roles and they're, they're pretty fresh out there, I think we'll get a better effort from that standpoint. So I'm not as concerned as I would be. Jenna Lane. Back to Brady. You said he's going to be joining the team this week sometime. Um, do you have any indication if he will play in this third preseason game or not? Not yet. We'll see how practice goes, and we'll make those decisions at the end of the week. Last question come from Joey Knight. Coach, it looked like um, Deidre and Sanat had a pretty solid game for you. Uh, what have you seen from him so far in camp? Has he kind of solidified his chance of making the roster? He's been a pleasant surprise. You know, that, that's a heavy position right there with Vita and Nacho and Sanat. I think, I think he showed himself well yesterday. I thought he showed himself well last week. Again, it comes down to a numbers game. We got to see how he compares to the other guys at the other positions. But I think he represented himself well, and I was very pleased with the way he played last night.